Hey everybody, Caleb here. Uh, really good morning so far. I'm so excited to be with you this morning, to be able to share the word with you this morning, to open up scripture with you this morning. Hope everyone's doing great, great time of worship. I love doing this recorded because one, if I make any mistakes, I can just edit it out, anything at all. Also, I can do things like this. Whew. Pretty cool. Special effects, that's where we're going to now. Explosions, lasers, everything. But I'll refrain today, I'll do that on the next one. All you get is fire this morning. And uh, hopefully that's a prophetic sign. <laughs> Let's bring some fire. Uh, but I'm excited, my name's Caleb. If you've not met me or I've not met you, my name's Caleb. Um, I'm excited to be opening the word with you this morning. For the last few weeks we've been going through uh, um, a sort of theme that we've we've launched a uh, new preaching series and it's all related to our new tagline or mission and vision statement that we have for All Nations Church and that is no grow go together and it all stems from Daniel eleven thirty two where it says but the people that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. In the last few weeks, we've had the privilege of hearing from Steve and Jacob on the know, the knowing God. And last week, Steve teed us up beautifully in the grow part of know, grow, go together. And so today I'm going to unpack more of the grow part of no grow go together and again that all stems from Daniel 11:32, and this is going to be the sort of theme for the following few weeks which I'm really excited about and um, the first thing we're gonna do is if you've got your Bibles we're gonna turn to Psalm 1 if you've got your Bibles get them out if you don't have them run to your libraries or your bookcases or wherever you have does anybody have a library anymore I don't know but run somewhere and get the get your Bible open your apps because we're gonna be diving into the Word of God this morning which I'm excited about so the first scripture we're gonna look at is Psalm 1 again I'm pack, unpacking everything out of grow on the no grow go together and um, there's a lot that I could say this morning on grow, on growing in the Lord, on growing in God and growing in our gifts and growing in maturity. Um, so because I only have 20 to 30 minutes, I'm going to uh, refrain from trying to fit everything in and uh, just take some aspects of grow. This is by no means an exhaustive um, view on how we can grow in God, but I hope this encourages us to push into becoming um, mature and becoming men and women of God. And so in Psalm 1, it says, 1-1, one, one, it says, How happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path of sinners, or join a group of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside streams of water, that bears its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. And Jeremiah 17 is a very similar scripture. And it says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. This is verse seven, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when he comes. Its leaves are always green and it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. And a number of places in the Bible, it talks about you and I being oaks of righteousness or trees who are planted by a river. When I look at this no grow go together, I can't help but think of, think of the picture of this tree, one that's planted by a stream of water whose roots go down deep, the roots signifying knowing the Lord. As our roots go down deeper, we get to know Him more and more and more. And as we get to know Him, it's like our roots going down deep into Him. And I have to say that that knowing God is an endless thing. As you get to know Him more, you, you start to realize and discover that there's more to know. And as you discover there's more to know, you find out there's even more to know about Him. And I think that knowing the Lord is just going to be an eternal thing that we're just get, gonna get to do for eternity. And as Steve teed us up so nicely last week, he said that um, there are mysteries that are hidden for us, not from us. And knowing God is like that digging into the mysteries of God as we dig deeper, as our roots go down deep, like that tree that's planted by a stream, um, we get to know him more and more. And as our roots go down deep, 
um, as we heard last week, again, as, as we get to know the Father, the inevitable result of that is growth. We will grow as our roots go down deep, as that tree, tree's roots go down deep, the tree grows and it grows into maturity and it grows in stature, it grows in strength. And then it bears fruit and that's sort of the go part of no grow, go together. So we know our roots go down deep, we grow, our, our, our tree grows, our life grows, and then the go part is 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 the the fruit and it's in in some in some places in the bible it talks about the tree having having leaves for the healing of the nations and the things that we produce that come out of us are for others around us and so we're going to dive into the grow part and my first point is this is that you and i are designed to grow that each and every one of us are designed to grow in God. I don't care who you are, where you're from, who your parents were, um, what your job is. You and I are designed by God to grow in Him. And that's that's amazing. That is fantastic. And just like the tree planted by a river, you are meant for growth. I mean, consider the, the picture of a tree for, for one minute and... And think about a tree that's planted. Whenever you plant a tree, there's always an expectation for growth. Whenever you plant anything, your expectation is that it's going to grow. That it's designed to grow. It's very DNA. It's what's in its core is designed to grow. It's meant to grow. It's meant to flourish. It's built to grow. It's very DNA has an expectation for growth. And just like a tree, you and I are designed to grow in God. We are designed that as we're planted in Him, as we get to know Him, as our roots go down deep in Him, we will grow. It's the it's the cause and effect. You know, you 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 put your roots down deep, you will grow up, grow up strong and grow up tall. In Hebrews five, there's a great scripture, and uh, it's verses twelve, and then to Hebrews six three. So we're gonna jump over two chapters, but same thought here. Um, and it says this, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity. Not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and faith toward God and the instruction of washings and baptisms and laying on hands, the resurrection of dead and eternal judgment. He's calling me and he's calling you to go on to maturity. That there is a maturity that he's called us to go on into. He's designed us for you and me to go on to maturity, to grow in maturity, to leave behind the milk, leave behind the stuff of babies and become men and women of God to go on to maturity, to put down the milk and become mature. And this spiritual maturity is for all of us. It's not just reserved for pastors. It's not just reserved for preachers. It's not just reserved for ministries gifts. But good news, it's for me and it's for you. It's for all of us who know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that if you are planted in the Father, if you are planted in Him, if you know Jesus, if you've given your life to Jesus, you are destined and designed and He desires you to grow. God has designed you to grow, to go on to maturity. Ephesians 4 says this, so that we may no longer be children tossed back and forth by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful, scream, deceitful screams. Uh, those two, you don't want to be uh, caught by deceitful screams, but deceitful schemes, uh, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, Christ Jesus. I love that scripture. It's, it's, it's growing up, no longer being children. This is the theme that we've seen on the, a number of scriptures here. No longer being children, no longer being infants, no longer taking the milk, but coming into maturity and solid foods and growing up in him, becoming men and women of God who are strong, who are ready, who are at the front lines of all that he's called us to. 
Many of you who know us, you know that we have three kids. We don't have any extra kids that you don't know about. We have three, as far as I'm aware. And our first child, Lily, who many of you know, was our first child. Obviously, she's our first child. And she was born first. And as first-time parents, we were the typical, quintessential first-timers. We, when, we were, when we were pregnant with Lily, or when Alex was pregnant with Lily, um, we gave ourselves to reading every book. We read every blog, every theory, we read every article known to man on how to raise a kid, on what was happening in the womb as Lily was growing over those nine months before she was born. We, we knew it all. We were first-time parents and we knew everything, um, like many first-time parents know. And um, we had this app and um, I remember it well and because uh, we used it for the first child and then the second child I think we use it for Malachi and then for Vinny you know when you get to your third child those kind of things you kind of know it and you you don't unfortunately do it anymore but anyway this app um, this app um, had a feature and it was called baby center I think and it had a feature where it tracked the growth of the baby in the womb where it had notifications that would come to you every day or every week and it would tell you the size of your baby in relation to an to an uh, an everyday object and so you get a notification one morning and it would say congratulations your baby is the size of an apple or the next next week would be like hey guess what he's the size of banana today Woohoo! or next week is he's the size of a bowling ball yes and you could watch this, this, uh, as time progressed, it was hilarious, really. I don't know how they chose these objects, but you were able to track the growth of the baby, comparing it to everyday objects, whether it was bananas or watermelons, you knew the size of your baby. And I think as parents, we're obsessed with the growth and progress of our children, and rightfully so. You know, we want them to succeed. We want them to grow. And I remember being so excited when when Lily became not, she was no longer an apple, but she became a watermelon in the womb. And um, and then when they're born, it doesn't stop there. You, you, We are literally obsessed with their growth, with their progress. It's, it's insane, really, the sort of new child sort of culture because you you're you're watching every day because you have different milestones that you're to tick off to make sure that they're doing to understand that they're developing correctly and so you're watching to see whether you know when they're smiling and the first time they smile it's fantastic it's progress you celebrate they smile for the first time first time they rolled over the first time they're crawling they start eating solids they start talking and walking and when they're riding a bike all of these things are progress and growth milestone after milestone and as parents we are we are so obsessed with this stuff and rightfully so we are excited about the growth and maturity of our kids you know I wouldn't be a great father if I wasn't too interested in or excited about the growth and development of my kids and just as we as natural parents are wanting our kids to grow and mature god our father even more so desires me and you to grow and go on to maturity he desires us to grow in him and he has so much for us so many mysteries hidden for us that as we grow open up along the way and that excites me. And he doesn't want us to remain spiritual babies. He wants us to grow up into men and women of God. It's a tragedy when Christians don't grow up. It's a, it's a tragedy when Christians remain spiritual babies. And they don't realize that they can progress from milk to maturity, from milk to solids. And although growth is designed and desired by God, the Bible makes it clear that that me and you have a part to play in it, that we, we in our part to play, if we're not careful or intentional, we can remain spiritual babies. And although he's destined us, desires us, and he's designed us to grow, there, there is an element in which we have a part to play. And there's an element in which we can stunt our own growth and even halt our growth for seasons if we're not intentional with growing in God. And with growth, not everything's going to be handed to us. With my kids, there's a lot that I had 
to, uh, you know, there's a lot, there's a big part that I had to play in seeing them grow and seeing them develop, especially in those early years. And especially um, when they're babies, you know, you're helping them grow, you're helping them develop. But as they mature and as they get older, there's an expectation that my kids take on their own responsibilities and they start to take on an intentional um growth and 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 they want to grow they want to learn they want to develop and there's an expectation that as they grow and mature and develop that they will take some of these responsibilities on themselves so there's 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 an action that's needed on our part in order for us to grow and although we're designed and he desires us to grow there is something there's a responsibility on our end as his children to go on to maturity, to leave behind the spiritual milk and take on solids and become mature in him and to be intentional with our growth. And there's loads of ways to do this. And I'm going to, I'm going to name three quick things and, um, ways in which we can grow in God that I believe are crucially important for every single one of us. These are three ways in which you and I can grow in God and be intentional with our growth to go from milk to maturity. Because what what a tragedy it would be if it was a church filled with spiritual babies. And I believe that that is not the, the, um, the desire of any of us to have All Nations Church or any of the churches that are tuning in today to be a church full of babies, a church where we walk into and it's just filled with people that are on spiritual milk still. Can you imagine what it would be like? I mean, I guess it would be, in in a lot of ways, it would be cute. I mean, that is the only thing going for it. If we remain spiritual babies, we'd be a cute church, Um, but (laughs) nothing would get done. Um, His kingdom will not advance with babies. He is looking for an army, not an An Gettys calendar. He is looking for men and women of stature and maturity, not those who are still playing under their their jungle gym. He is looking for those who will give themselves to growing in him. In the natural, it would be super weird if people were born and then they just remain babies. Can you imagine what that would be like? It would just be, it would just be bizarre. I mean, there'd be babies lying all over the place. Nothing would get done. It would be loud. It would be chaotic. Uh, no progress whatsoever. It would stink. Um, it would be cute for a while, but it would just be nonsense. And it's the same in the church that he has called us to, uh, from, from infants to, to being mature men and women of God. And he's not returning for a baby. He's returning for a bride. And this is one point that I'm excited about in all of this. The growth that we will see, the growth that we can give ourselves to, the growth that he desires, really ultimately finds itself in, if we give ourselves to growing in him and maturing in him and be a bride who goes on to maturity, a church who goes on to maturity, ultimately we become the bride who's spotless without wrinkle that he will return to. And this really excites me. And and if you get anything from this morning, anything from watching this, I'd encourage you to pray about your growth and pray about where you can grow because of what is accomplished through growing in God. And this it's this, it says in Revelation 19, it says, then I heard what sounded like a great multitude like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting hallelujah for our Lord almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. We are a church that believes in the return of the King Jesus. We believe that Jesus is coming back and he's coming back to a bride that's victorious, a bride who's mature, a bride who has made herself ready. You see what it says? It made, she made herself ready. There is an intentionality there where where the people of God has made have made themselves ready because they've given themselves to growth. They've gone on to maturity and they've made themselves without spot or wrinkle, intentionally made themselves ready. Who have given themselves to growing in God. 
And this is why I believe it's so important for me and for you to give ourselves to growth. Because this has eternal consequences. Because ultimately, he's coming back to a bride that's victorious. A bride without spot, without wrinkle. Um, a bride who's made herself ready. And when we give ourselves to growing in him, when we're intentional with growing in him, knowing that he's designed and he desires us to grow, and knowing that if we get to know him, we're going to grow and it's it's just a result of getting to know him more and more and more and putting ourselves onto him. The result is that he's going to return. It's it's hastening the day of the second coming. It's hastening the day of the king, the, the day of his return. And that to me excites me. And I believe that's something that we need to revive as a church, this sort of excitement and this anticipation that he is coming back. And the way he's coming back, he's coming back to a bride who's made herself ready, a bride who's given herself to growth. So as I mentioned, there are three ways in which I believe that we can give ourselves to growing in God in this season. And every season of life, these are three foundational things that you can give yourselves to, to grow in the Lord. The first thing is the Word of God, is the Bible. Is It sounds foundational and simple, but it's so true. It's so easy to um, become apathetic towards this book, be apathetic towards the Word of God, and in seasons forget to even pick it up and read it. But I encourage each of us, including myself, throw yourself into reading the Word of God daily, to give yourself to devouring this. In the Bible it says, in 2 Timothy it says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. If you want to grow in God, if you want to be equipped for every good work, then you need to get into this word. It's full of wonder. It's full of amazing um, truths and promises and revelation that as you open it up, each and every day, I promise you, you will grow. You will grow strong in the Lord if you give yourself to reading the Word of God. In Psalm 119, there's a great promise that I, I hold on to when I come to Scripture. And this is for those of us who, who find it sometimes difficult. And I've had many seasons where this has happened where it just feels like it's dry. It feels like I'm not getting anything out of this. Do I really want to read this? again and again and again, is it really going to help? And it says this in Psalm 119, open my eyes that I may behold the wondrous things out of your word. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your word. That's Psalm 119 verse 18. And I love that because when I open this up, I can pray that scripture. God, open my eyes. Spirit, open my eyes that as I read this, I may behold wondrous things out of your word and there are wondrous things to behold in here last week steve spoke about mysteries that are hidden for us not from us and there are mysteries in here that we can dive into and find that are hidden for us but are only going to be found if we're intentional with getting into this thing so get into the word because that's going to help you grow the next thing is prayer prayer is Again, just like the word, if we give ourselves to prayer, we will grow. It says in 1 Thessalonians, it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So we've got the word and we've got prayer. Give yourself to pray, praying, communicating, conversing, laughing with God, talking with God regularly, just every day, just wherever you are. It doesn't have to be a... Uh, a religious, you know, I've got to do an hour every day, but just start small. Just start somewhere. Just start by reading this for 15 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. Start by praying 10, 15 minutes a day. And I promise you, you will grow. You become sharper and stronger as you give yourself to the word and to prayer. I know one of the, recently one of the most uh, phenomenal seasons of my life was in January where I gave myself um, for the month of January, I said I was going to read the whole Bible, and it was something called the Shred. It was a reading plan that you could find on the on the Bible app, and it basically a couple hours a day you can get through reading the whole of the Bible. And because I gave myself intentionally to reading the Word of God each and every day, that season of my life I can tell you was one of the most phenomenal, uh, life giving 
growth giving seasons of my life. I was more clear than ever. I felt I was hearing God clearer than ever. I was getting more revelation than ever. It was phenomenal. So I encourage you to give yourself to reading the, reading the Word of God. And if you want to do a shred, send me a message. I can send you a link. I totally recommend it. It's pretty intense, but it's worth it. The last thing, we've got the Word, and we've got prayer. The last thing is fellowship and discipleship. It says in Proverbs 27, it says, As iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another, or so one person sharpens another. There's something very uh, life-giving and growth-giving, or growth-inducing, uh, if that's a word, um, that comes with uh, having fellowship with others, by being together with other believers. And I encourage each and every one of us to... Give yourself to finding somebody that can that can sharpen you, that can disciple you. Find somebody that you can disciple. If we can be a church that gives ourselves to the word and to prayer and then sharpening one another, whew, I mean, that is a powerful combination. And I'm excited for what the results could be. And when we give ourselves to being with others, it encourages us, they can challenge us, they can keep us accountable, they keep us on track. And we will grow as we give ourselves to fellowship and discipleship. So it's the word of God, prayer, and fellowship and discipleship. These three things that if you can give yourselves to these things in this season, in the coming seasons, each and every season, I guarantee you, you will grow. It's like water, sun, and soil that causes a tree to grow. So it is with these three things. These are daily nourishing things that cause us to grow and cause us to grow in him. So let's give ourselves to growing in the word, in prayer, in discipleship, knowing that he desires and he's designed us to grow. And we can actually partner with him and be intentional with our growth as well. Where we can be growing in wisdom, growing in character, growing in strength, growing in discipline, growing in the fruit of the spirit, growing in gift and anointing. And I believe that we'll keep growing and growing and growing until the bride has made herself ready for the return of the king. And, and, I, and, I, and I will say this too, that if some of us are waiting for particular opportunities, there are some opportunities, there are some things and doors that God only opens when we become mature or when we become more mature. Um, there are some responsibilities that I just don't give my kids because I just know they're not ready for it. I'm not going to give Lily responsibility for my bank account. That would be crazy. She's not ready for that. And it's important to understand that there are some things in God, some opportunities, some mysteries that are hidden for us that only become revealed to us when we're mature, that are reserved only for the mature. And so growth isn't just an an, an add-on. I believe that it, there, there's an expectation in Scripture for you and I to grow because God wants the best for you and He wants the best for me. And He knows that if we mature and if we go on to maturity, if we give ourselves to growth, He knows that there are things that are hidden for us around the corner that will blow our minds, knock our socks off, excite us, and make this life far more exciting than we could ever imagine. And in this odd COVID season, I believe that it's the perfect time for us to give ourselves to these things and start forming habits in these areas. To go on to maturity, to be those who give ourselves to growth. In uh, 1 Corinthians 14, it says, just to close, Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. We need to be a church who gives ourselves to growing in God so we aren't like children anymore who are tossed back and forth by everything that comes and hits us. But we are the bride who has made herself ready, victorious, and on the front lines of all that he has for us. So to, today, no matter where you find yourself, whether you're still on uh, whether you're on solids and you've been on solids for a while, or whether you're still on milk, if you're a new Christian with us, and that's great too. The news, the good news for all of us is that his desire for all of us is that we'll go on to maturity 
and that we can partner with him to grow strong in the Lord. So be blessed, church. Grow strong in the season. Grow strong where you're planted, knowing that you're like a tree planted beside waters. And as our roots go down deep into him, as we continue to get to know who he is, I know that we will grow strong in him. We'll go on to maturity from milk to maturity in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Be blessed, church. Have a great day. Au revoir.